Good morning YouTube, welcome to week 41 of my weight loss journey. Um, so let's get the numbers done first. So I um, hopped on the scales this morning and I'm down to 66.7. Yay! So since last week that's a loss of 0.5 of a kg, so half a kg, which is a pound, over a pound. And I thought, you know, you imagine a, a pound of butter or a pound of, I shouldn't say butter because butter is good for you, but a pound of unwanted body fat <laughs> is gone <laughs> gone forever um so i'm currently so my current weight loss so far is 77.6 pounds um that's 35.2 kgs altogether so that's really good i'm getting there and i thought i'd um this week sorry i'm looking down here because i've got my i've got to write it down because i forget um i thought i'd recap my journey so far so um you know, I've had a massive influx of new subscribers recently. How, why, when or where, I don't know. Um, I hope my new subscribers appreciate, you know, or not appreciate, but realise that this is just my personal journey. And I am now following the ketogenic diet, 100% um, ketogenic diet. And, um, you know, and it's just my experiences with what I'm doing and how I'm um, coping with it, basically. So it's all about it's all about me without being too selfish and what's going on in my life and how things are. So I hope this is what the new subscribers are looking for. And um, anyway, so let's get on with recapping. So my journey started 40 weeks ago, 41 weeks ago. And um, actually, it was the 10th of July last year. Um, I woke up one morning and thought this is ridiculous I'm chronically overweight um very obese and I thought you know I I had a, a wake-up call at the doctor's he told me that my um my blood sugars was getting up there as he put it he said not long now and we'll be thinking about medication and all that kind of thing and I was really shocked at that and also I had a lot of aching joints I had a lot of vision disturbance I had um just basically feeling unwell and without putting too fine a point on it I had quite a lot of stomach issues um, around going number twos um, four or five times a day quite sloppy not good that's all we'll say about that um, so all those things were going on with me and I thought this is ridiculous I'm slowly killing myself I need to turn around and um, and get get my life under control basically get my eating habits under control because at the end of the day it's only us as an individual being in control of your own eating habits and your own lifestyle it's not somebody else making me eat those foods it wasn't somebody else putting bits of cake sugar chocolate sweet stuff into my mouth it was me ultimately it was me so I thought, what can I do to start a diet? So I decided to go on a sugar-free diet. So I thought, I'll just, I watched that sugar film and I put a trailer recently up on here um, about it. So if you can source that, I definitely recommend that you watch that film because for me, I watched that film and I thought, oh my God, I am consuming so much sugar. It was ridiculous. So I started my journey by just cutting out the obvious sugars. So the obvious sugars by that, I mean things like in um, cakes, biscuits, sweets, um, baked beans, some of the sauce mixes that I buy. And believe me, when I got to the supermarket and I started looking at what contained sugar and what didn't contain sugar i really struggled to find stuff that didn't contain sugar i mean it was virtually i could fit just sauces alone i could barely fit them in my hand you know because it was it was nothing hardly anything what contained sugar was virtually the whole supermarket you know so that was a bit of an eye opener and it was a bit of a challenge and i decided to do follow the vegan diet for a while and that sort of that worked really well I did lose quite a bit of weight um you know and it got me it got me started and then as time went on I started to invent because I started to plateau a little bit and I think it, at one point I put on a little bit of weight and I thought hmm that's not quite right you know so I need to research and I had a very good friend who was doing the ketogenic diet 
and she talked to me a little bit about it and I thought oh yeah so I did over that course of the week um, it was around week 20 so about halfway through my journey I um, looked into the ketogenic diet I did a lot of research online um, I looked at people who doctors like for example Dr Jason Fung what he said and how he spoke about it and explained it was very understandable for me I also really like Dr. Ken Berry. He's a no-nonsense general practitioner in, I think he's in Tennessee, but he's in the States. I really loved his no-nonsense approach to it. And also Dr. Ken Berg, uh, not Ken Berg, sorry, Dr. Berg. Um, he was really good as well. And then there was um, Thomas DeLauder as well. I liked his, but I mean, he's all about more about pumping up and getting the fitness side of things. And there were a couple others that I liked. Um, Keto Connect was one of them, which is a couple doing it. So I watched a lot of their videos. I researched the whole diet. And I thought, you know, this is starting to make sense to me. Um, you know, it like having the healthy fats and then just cutting out the sugars and the carbohydrates and the pastas, the rices and the grains. You know, I can see how I, it just clicked in my head how all those things were not doing me any good whatsoever. So at that point, I sort of slowly switched over to the ketogenic diet. It took me a couple of weeks to sort of get into the swing of things because it's very different to how I was eating. You know, I was eating pasta and rice when I was on the vegan diet because I thought, hey, this is healthier than potatoes, biscuits, and, and, you know, all the other rubbish that I was eating, all the, the sauce mixes with the masses of sugar in it. So, um, although the vegan diet was a very good diet, and it didn't have nowhere near the amount of sugar that, that you would have on a normal, you know, the diet I was eating before, um, but I wanted to cut even more of the sugar carbohydrate, carbohydrates out of my diet, so that's when I decided to swap to keto. And I've now been on keto for like 20 weeks, halfway through my journey, and I'm losing weight. I'm not hungry. Um, and I have had recently, the last couple of weeks, not last week, but the last couple of weeks, I did have a bit of a wobble. I did sort of had, I was in a very dark place for a couple of weeks, and I really did struggle. I did up my food intake, but not to the extent of carbs. I just ate a lot more ketogenic friendly foods, but from one day and I had the wrong type of chocolate and I had a two-thirds of a big bar so I was in a very dark place to do that um, so but I was eating far too much of the keto style foods so what I've done this week to, to keep on my weight loss journey I've paired it back a little bit I've now gone back to one meal a day which is not strictly true I'm sort of doing a four hour window if you like of eating so I'll have you know I'll, I'm not having my breakfast so I'm doing it around 11 o'clock I'm having something to eat then which will consist of my normal breakfast the jelly with chia seeds and you know um and the yogurt sorry the I forgot what was it, yogurt which I have every day and then about Three hours later, or two and a half, three hours later, I'm making a meal. And my husband's doing the same thing, and um, I'm sort of making a proper meal this time. I'm having sort of half my plate is vegetables, a quarter of my plate is protein, and the other quarter is some sort of fat. So it's cheese, avocado, butter. And you sort of, I'm including that fat count in the cooking process. So if I cook, Say, for example, um, like I'm going to have salmon with vegetables. So there is a little bit of fat in the salmon because it's the wild salmon. It's, uh, it's the decent stuff. Um, so I'm going to put a little piece of butter in the foil when I cook the salmon. And I'm going to have it with cauliflower and broccoli. And I am going to um, cook that cauliflower, stir fry it in fat butter so that's sort of my fat portion if you like and the salmon is the protein and the vegetables will be the broccoli broccoli sorry broccoli and cauliflower getting all tongue-tied this morning it could be because of my drink because i've not had my coffee 
drastically cutting down. I can have coffees in my four hour window and I'm usually fitting three in there. But I've discovered this new drink, which is, oh, well, it's not a new drink, but it's something that I really, really like. And it is tonic water, diet tonic water with one of the fruit tea bags in it. And they don't, this is nothing. It doesn't, there's no carbs, no sugar, no calories, no nothing in here. So this is a really good drink to start the day. And I'm really enjoying that. So um, that's good. So I also did a couple of meals last week as well, so I will put them up here. Um, the first one was a cauliflower bake with bacon and egg. Loved it, really nice, enjoyed that. And it was had, it had cheese in it and um, egg in the cauliflower bake as well. And the other meal was what we had the other day, which was a salad. So you'll see half the plate has got salad. And then I've got... Um, meats uh it was meatballs actually i had and then i had avocado and cheese for the fats i had a little bit of uh, mayonnaise which was is olive oil mayonnaise so that was very low in carbs so that whole meal didn't really add up to probably about 10 carbs in total i'm not really tracking my macros or not really tracking my um my carbs but i know just by instinct that I am being, you know, sticking to less than 20 carbs a day overall, the whole, you know, with the, with the cream, the coffees with cream and the, and the breakfast. So, so long as I'm doing that, um, I'm, I'm still losing weight. So that's really good. Um, so that's my journey so far. So, um, half sugar-free vegan, half keto. And I must say, I really like the ketogenic lifestyle. All the foods that I'm allowed to eat is all the foods I love. Um, okay, I'm not eating cakes and biscuits, but I have just recently started exploring some uh, recipes around um, cooking with the almond flour and the coconut flour and making cakes and biscuits. Pardon me. I will do that. But when I've reached my goal weight, because when I reach my goal weight, I will, sh I will swap to a maintenance style diet and I will probably have a piece of cake or a fat bomb or a biscuit made keto, made the keto way. So I'm still not having those grains and flours and, you know, all those other things that you would normally make cakes with. Um, but... I'm just exploring that because I can actually see light at the end of the tunnel. I've got, you know, my first goal was 65 kgs. I'm not far from that now. Unfortunately, I've got a holiday before I probably get to that 65. I'm going to really try hard to just stick with just the two meals when I'm on holiday and keep them within the four hour window if I can, because I really don't want to put on a bunch of weight. Um, and eat healthy, stick to the keto way as much as I can. If I can just keep the weight as it is for those three weeks, I'll be happy. And then when I come back, I'll get back on the bandwagon and get down to those 60 kgs. I always said I want to be between 60 and 65. If I can keep that range on a maintenance diet, I'll be over the moon and um, that'll be great. And I was thinking about also, um, I was thinking about my grandparents' diet. Um, now, thinking back, my grandmother had never even heard of rice. I mean, she heard of rice, but in a rice pudding with milk and, and cream and, you know, sugar and all that. But she never really heard of rice or pasta or pizzas or anything like that. That just wasn't in our generation. And my grandmother never used any of those products but my grandmother and I'm built exactly like her short and she was a large lady and I you know when I was big before I started this journey me and my grandmother would have been body type exactly the same exactly the same body type but I realized my grandmother was overweight because she like me had a sweet tooth and she baked, and she baked biscuits, she baked cakes, um, she made desserts, and all those items had masses of sugar, masses of flour, 
and she ate grains. She had cereals and things for her breakfasts and stuff. So I really do believe, thinking back, that she was bigger because our diet contained a lot of those carbohydrate laden, sugar laden products. I think if my grandmother had cut all those out of her diet, essentially she was eating ketogenic because she was making her own meals. She was having good portions of vegetables. All her meals were homemade. She was a home cook and she ate meat with every meal. She had fats. My nan used to make chips. Okay, chips is not good, but she used to make chips or fries and she would cook them in dripping. She'd get a big, you know, a, a thing of dripping from the, from the supermarket, melt that down in a pan and she would cook chips like that. So, you know, she also used to make stews, but she went wrong by making her own dumplings and that would be flour, you know? So I, I really think that, you know, other than those products that she was putting in the, into the diet, you know, the potatoes and all that kind of thing, I think if my grandmother cut those things out of her diet, she would be my size now, you know? So it just goes to show over the years how our diet has changed so much. And in that generation, you know, that's only two generations ago. So, you know, I'm 58 now. In my dad's generation, who's in his 80s now, you know, all those bad foods was introduced in my dad's generation. And my dad sort of missed it a little bit because he was eating like my grandmother's food. And he was, you know, he was sort of, he, he didn't really overeat my dad. And my dad's never had a weight problem. Neither did my mother. Um, but all those bad foods were introduced in his generation and then it got to my generation and I started to eat them, buy them, convenience foods, easy foods, quick foods, foods that you don't have to cook, foods that you can just grab and go, all that, all those foods are not good for you. It's getting back to the basics, it's getting back to the basic meals, it isn't going to involve a little bit of cooking, I'm not a fan of cooking. But most of the meals that I've researched are very quick, very easy. So that's what I'm planning to do from this point forward. Um, so you saw the two meals that I did last week. Hopefully I'm going to have a few more to put up for next week. So I'll call it a day now because my I'm, I do try to keep my videos around 15 minutes and we're up to 17 point four minutes now so I will say goodbye um there will be an update next week which will be week 42 and um, once again welcome to all my new subscribers thank you for watching um I appreciate it if you could please like or dislike this video if you do dislike it just give me a hint why and I can uh, address that so anyway thanks a lot and I'll catch up with you next week bye